The application list allows you to see the applications that are configured on a particular device, as well as their enabled and disabled status, and allows you to access the tables to edit how the applications operate. To access the application list, select the device and then click the application list button on the toolbar. This button will only appear if you have selected a D2X device such as a D20, D200, D25, or iBox. The application list shows all of the applications configured on this selected device. You can also access the application list by double-clicking a device. Applications are grouped by functional categories. You have client applications, which were formerly known as DCAs. You have server applications, which were formerly known as DPAs. You have automation applications, which were formerly known as DTAs. You have supporting applications, which provide system functionality to the device. You also have data link applications, which provide communications activity. If an application is disabled, you will see a red X here. You can select the row and click the Enable Applications button to turn the application back on. An application is disabled, you will see a red X here. You can select the row and click Enable Application button to turn the application back on. Now that I've re-enabled the application, you will see a red square on the device indicating that the device has been modified and that the configuration needs to be regenerated. Before I do that though, I'm going to reopen the application list. I'm going to configure the Bridge Manager application. I'll highlight the row, right click it, and select Open Application. So to edit the configuration, I can double click any of these table icons or I can access them directly from the Tables tab. When finished editing my applications, I can generate my device and the configuration is updated. In this case, the device has been configured to use a firmware set. So all of the applications have been pre-selected. However, if I want to, I can add an application manually to the application list. To do that, I click the Add Application button. When I add an application to a device that is based upon a firmware set, I'll break the link between the firmware set and the device. From this point on, I will no longer be linked back to that firmware set that I originally selected when I created the device. By adding an application, I am, in essence, creating a custom firmware set. When I add an application to the device that is based upon a firmware set, I'll break the link between the firmware set and the device. From this point on, I will no longer be linked back to the, that firmware set that I originally selected when I created the device. By adding this application, I am, in essence, creating a custom firmware set. If I know the part number of the application that I want to add, I can type it into the Application ID search field. If I don't know it, I can just scroll through the list until I locate the application. Once I have selected the application that I want, and I selected the version that I want, I click OK.
You can see now that the set point adjustment DT application has been added for me. Because I manually added the application to my application list, it's already enabled for me. All I need to do now is configure the application as I want. D2X devices like D20, D200, D25, or iBox can be configured to use a firmware set. Firmware sets define the applications that can be run on these devices. You can create a firmware set within the firmware library of SGconfig. To access the firmware library, click the firmware library button in the ribbon. The firmware library shows you all of the firmware sets that are currently in this open project. As you can see, I have seven firmware sets at the moment. When you import a project, you import any firmware sets that were created within. You can also create a new firmware set if you like. I will show you the process for that now. Click the New button and type in the firmware information. Put in the name and a description. For my firmware set as well as any information fields I want. Now that I have my information filled in, I click the Application tab. The Application tab screen allows me to add applications that will be included in the firmware set. There are two areas of the screen. At the top, I have the Available Applications list area. These are all of the applications that are available to me, and I move them down to the bottom of the screen to the Selected Applications area. These are the applications that have been included in the firmware set. To add an application to be included in the list, you locate it in the list, select the version of the application you want, and then click the Select button. You can see the application I selected has now been included in the list at the bottom. The ID. If you know the ID of the application that you are looking for, you can also type that in directly. That may be a faster way to include applications. For example, if you want to the for example, if you want plant IO and you know the number is P097, you can quickly jump down to that application and add it to your list. And now that is complete, I will click the OK button to complete the firmware set. You can see that my firmware set has been created for me in the firmware library. If I'm creating a new device, I can use this firmware set. But I can also copy the firmware set into a different project if I want to use it there. To do that, I click the Copy button. All of the information that I filled in previously is still included. The only difference is that I can now select the project that I want to copy it to. I'll select the Region 1 project and click OK. When I close the firmware library in my central project, open the Region 1 project, and open the 
firmware library. I can see that my new firmware set has been copied into the Region 1 project firmware library. You'll also see an edit button here. This allows me to change the applications that are in any firmware set. For example, I can add new applications, remove applications, or I can change the version of any application that is included. One thing to keep in mind is that if the firmware set has been used on any device in a project and a change is made to that firmware set, the link is broken between the device and the firmware set, meaning all of those devices that use the firmware set before it was edited will not take on those edits that were made after that. The delete button on the firmware library is used to remove any firmware sets from my firmware library.